yeah, I've never done anything like this before, and it was mostly a success. The folks at Anchor Make are sponsoring this video to get a total noob up to speed on some 3D printing. Boy, howdy, do I mean up to speed. Speed. They sent over this beauty. This is the Anchor Make M5C for me to take on a test drive and share my thoughts. I have to confess, I have almost zero experience with 3D printing, which I think that's why they wanted me to try this out. The M5C is built around a few new features for folks like me, curious noobs. A follow-up to their successful M5 printer, the M5C is a little more streamlined and boasts some easy app management and one-click button operation. But I'm getting ahead of myself already. If it's really easy to use, it also has to be really easy to set up. I shot a little of that footage, so let's check it out. Anchor Make just sent over a pretty big box there. I don't usually do a whole lot of unboxing videos, but let's take a look at what's inside. I've never really done anything like this before for one of my videos. I am a complete novice. And now I've got a table full of parts over there on my little student desk, and I'm grateful that my little IKEA desk over there is at least deep enough. It's, it's sort of at least wide enough for the base unit of this 3D printer. All right, the setup on that went really quick. Now, I really took my time on this one. I wanted to make sure I was doing everything right. The entire construction was only about a half hour with me triple checking everything that I was doing. We're talking 12 screws and a couple of plastic clips. And they have the full toolkit to make sure you've got everything you need for assembly. It's really well laid out. Funnily enough, the fiddliest bit of all this was just the little retention clip for where our filament is gonna feed through that little duct. And twice I tried to get it snapped on, it would just fling off and hit the ceiling of my office here. It's a very tiny little plastic piece. That's a very small nitpick in an otherwise totally painless setup. So now we've got to dig into the app and start getting the, uh, the bed all set up and hopefully I'll be into making my first print here in another half hour. Right now, the heat bed is doing its leveling. It's doing a 49-point auto adjustment. I'm in five of 49 adjustments right now, estimating about five or six more minutes of this calibration. Then I can feed the filament and we can get into our first print. Yep, that went nice and easy. Took about 10 minutes. The leveling is complete. Now I'm gonna flip around the filament and get that loaded. It's funny because I wanted to leave this all set up all pretty with all the anchor like branding on the outside, but the filament goes the opposite direction. So I'm gonna have to flip that spindle around and, and feed it that way. So it won't look quite as nice when I'm shooting some of my B-roll here, but it should work. And that's what we really care about is that it works. Whenever I look at videos on 3D printers, I always see sort of these test prints. There's like a little boat, uh, like a little boaty McBoat face. And so I think that's what I'm gonna start with for the very first print, just to make sure everything's uh, working correctly. But then there's like this cute little frog model that I really wanna make for my daughter. So I think we're gonna try them back to back. Let's see if I can get two prints done today in a reasonable period of time. I'm really excited to see how fast this thing can print because that's the big claim from Anchor Make is that this is a crazy fast 3D printer. Okay, yeah, this thing's moving fast. It's really going for it here. This is really crazy seeing it actually in action up close in person, it, it, shooting all this video of it, it really doesn't get across just how crazy quick and aggressive all of these little movements are. About 18 minutes later, and I've got an adorable little boat. I am so impressed with this printer's stabilization. The motors on this are so strong, it's not only rattling my cheap IKEA desk, it's also vibrating the hardwood flooring and shaking the cameras that I have for uh, shooting my time lapses. And it completed that print in a crazy fast period of time. I'm gonna let this all kind of cool, get, just gonna get it reset, and then I'm gonna jump right back into that frog model because I'd love to have that done. My daughter is home from camp in about two hours, but I can't wait to see her face when daddy prints her a toy from his new 3D printer. And here, is that frog. I was so excited to show it to my daughter and she was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, neat. I want a bunny. Oh, I also printed out a bunny. I really like it when a product lives up to uh, its own marketing claims. A boat print in under 18 minutes. More complex animals with print in place joints in close to two hours. My wife is already asking for new tablet, phone, and headphone stands for her desk. Your mind starts buzzing with the possibilities down to the silliest little things. Things. Like I have this old bookcase here in the office and it's missing one plug for 
one shelf. Yeah, I could go out and buy it or find something like that at a hardware store, but now I can also just make a replacement right here or a new adapter for the funky U-pipe that's under our bathroom sink. If I can just get a couple simple measurements, we've never been able to find an off the shelf part to fix it. I'm not even concerned if it's always the most cost effective solution, it's just fun to know that I can make that little widget that I need. I don't need to look for it, buy it, and ship it. That's fun, but it's also empowering. The app integration on our phones works exactly as presented. It's a simple and clear layout for sending print information to the M5C and then monitoring the progress of that print job. The timing on the app is pretty accurate once you account for all the parts that need to get up to temperature. But I also mentioned the one big button capability and the one click function is interesting. I, I almost don't trust it, it's so simple. But you can plug a drive here, there's a little USB-C on the side, and you can start up a print with the giant play button right here. And if you need to pause a print job, you just hit the button again. And then once you dig into the app, there's also some additional functionality that you can map to double press and long press. I'm enough of a control freak, double checking everything through the app makes sense to me, or maybe I'd even wanna send it through the desktop software instead. But the option to just set it and forget it is pretty handy too. It almost makes 3D printing as straightforward as throwing a meal into my Instant Pot. To me, that's always been a part of the dream of 3D printing, and it's in the newest generation of hardware that I feel the consumer application of something like this is just a bit more accessible. And I haven't even started digging that deep yet. The most direct out of the box use for this is clear and it's really fun. And from here, we can go a lot deeper in designing our own projects and models. Now that my daughter has her little floppy bunny and she's painted it, she's already asking for other figures and toys. She recently got this kit of dinosaur toys to paint and I'm pretty sure I could print better dinos than what she got. She's seven years old and she's fascinated by this thing. You know, sitting next to me on the couch and we're scrolling through looking at models to print, I mean, a unit Unicorn is really high on her list for one of our next projects, and she's already started designing a mini dollhouse. I'm not embellishing for the sake of this video. These are her starting sketches. She's talking about blueprints and design software to make a modular dollhouse with accessories. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for this. Being the geek that I am, I want her thinking about creating her own stuff. Just a little bit more experience with some design software. I have a strong feeling she's really gonna run with this. Now, I'll, I'll throw the tech specs over here on the screen. I honestly can't comment on comparisons to any informed degree right now, as I'm personally just getting up to speed on what some of these metrics and measurements might actually mean. The few points that I've looked up on other 3D printer reviews, like total time to complete a little boat print, it seems like Anchor makes high performance claims live up to some real world scrutiny. What I have learned though in making a product that can produce a detailed print and can move an extruder this fast, the motors on this thing are beefy. I would not recommend using this on a cheap desk like I have here in my office. Now all of the little things that I've printed so far were printed on this IKEA desk though, so I'm very impressed with the unit's ability to stabilize and compensate for not only its own movement, but also the movement and the wobble of my desk. My first prints came out really well, but I think I need something sturdier to place this on with all the other projects that we're talking about doing in the future. Also, just on a personal note, the fans aren't excessively loud, but we're dealing with some serious temperatures and the airflow is necessary. This is louder than a gaming laptop at full bore. I am impressed though, my office is tiny and I was worried this would be a bigger project than my little room could handle here, but it seems to fit in okay. Genuinely, just all around, I was kind of anxious about this video. It's not to say that 3D printing has been so techy that I couldn't figure it out, but the time and the effort to get up to speed was a little daunting. I remember that first wave of makerspace tinker projects, just getting acquainted with the software and the setup and the hardware and the calibrations, and I didn't really have to do any of that now. I work on a lot of videos where even when I know what I'm doing, when I do feel competent on a subject, the testing and production of a review can take an unexpected turn. So it is, it is really refreshing when a company says, hey, this is gonna be easy, 
And it really is. Four hours from taking it out of the shipping box and I was already finishing up my second print. And that gets me kind of excited. I just dipped my toe into something new. And I love having these breakthroughs as a tech reviewer. It helps, it helps keep things fresh. 3D printing isn't anything new, but Anchor Makes M5C here helps bring it to a new audience. So I will, of course, leave some links down below for more information on this, the Anchor Make M5C. Another huge thanks to Anchor Make for sending this my way. My daughter has big plans for it already. So as always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you enough. Those of you who are checking out my home site, somegadgetguy.com, um, if you're clicking on those links in my video descriptions, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, that's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet? At some gadget guy, pretty much everywhere. I produce my podcast on the Twitch. I'm spending a lot more time on the Mastodons, sharing a few more photos to my Flickr, a little less so these days on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. But I will catch you all on the next video.